slash GitHub. So, Amoju, we've got another session coming up. Who's up next? Next is Chris Patterson with Ship It with GitHub Actions and GitHub Packages. Chris is a product manager here at GitHub and he's um, had an interesting career in tech. He started off with classic ASP, then went on to Visual Basic, to Java and to .NET. Now he's even dabbling in JavaScript. So now over to you, Chris. Hey, thanks, Emoju and Shado. I really appreciate that introduction. Uh, as Emoju said, I am a product manager at GitHub Actions and the or at GitHub, and I specifically work on GitHub Actions. Um, first off, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, this virtual conference has been a lot of fun. I certainly learned a lot today and seen a lot of really cool things. Um, it's great to be able to share this time with you and interact with the community, uh, even though we can't be together. Uh, so today, I'm going to go through uh, a little bit more about GitHub Actions. Um, as Nat mentioned in the keynote this morning, we launched it last November, made it generally, or last August actually, made it generally available uh, in November for all your repos. And I could not be more impressed with what I've seen so far. The uptake from the community and the interaction has been amazing. Um, and it's really, really great to see what you guys are doing with Actions. Uh, so today, we're going to walk through a couple of different things. While Actions has been out for a few months, you know, not everybody is completely familiar with it. So I want to make sure we go through and just get a little bit of an introduction on how to get started with Actions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the details about Actions, some of the things that uh, to help you orient yourself. Um, then we're going to do a really quick getting started basic CI demo uh, of how I can just do a simple website. And then I'm going to take all of the things that we've talked about and just put some interesting spins on it uh, and talk a little bit more about some of the great things that I've seen from the community. So getting started, um, GitHub Actions, obviously at its core, is a great automation system. That's really what we want to build. Um, we want to make sure that we have a very, very powerful and flexible CI and eventually CD system. Um, to allow you to automate those workflows, to automate that continuous testing, to automate that continuous integration and continuous delivery. But at the same time, our vision for Actions goes beyond that. We want to make sure that we have a system that can allow you to automate any workflow on GitHub. And you can see this uh, in action through the wide variety of events that we support. Everything from triaging issues uh, to labeling and categorizing pull requests and other incredible things that I've seen the community do. Uh, and finally, that community aspect. We want to make we want to enable um, our community to take advantage of these automation workflows and reusable bits in the same way that we do in our in our applications by taking advantage of open source libraries that have been created by other members of the community. So, getting started. In order to get started with GitHub Actions, all you have to do is go up to a repo that you own. Uh, click on the Actions tab, and you'll be presented with a screen with a wide variety of different templates. Um, we'll walk through this in more detail later. But these templates come from, uh, today, uh, they come from a repository that's actually open source. It's in the Actions uh, org on GitHub. It's called Starter Workflows. Um, a variety of ones we have created uh, ourselves as part of the product team. But we've also incorporated ones from partners uh, such as Amazon or Google, HashiCorp, uh, Tencent, Azure, as well as from the community. For example, uh, most recently, we switched over the Ruby workflow to be one that is actually maintained by the Ruby community. Over time, we have a vision to expand this to allow uh, anybody to potentially show up on this page by creating a starter workflow and, and publishing it to a marketplace, just like you can an action or an app. Uh, simply get started. You click the new workflow. You'll be presented with the editor. Uh, you can commit it, and off you go. So as I've gone through, I've used a couple of different terms, and I want to make sure we're all on the same page with terminology. Uh, with GitHub Actions, the product, we have two major things that we think about uh, with respect to terminology. There's a workflow, which is the file you use to orchestrate uh, what you want to do. It's where you declare the event that you want to listen on. Uh, you declare your jobs. A job is just a set of steps that runs on a particular compute platform, whether that's Mac, Windows, or Linux. And then a series of steps, which are the individual actions. An action is that core reusable bit. Today, they can either be written in JavaScript 
or as a Docker container. And in that action, you describe with some metadata what it does, what kinds of inputs you want to take from it, uh, as well as what sort of outputs you want, where it goes. These actions are simply stored in repos and they're referenced across the GitHub graph. There's over 3,000 actions in the GitHub Marketplace today. Um, and as we walk through the demos for this uh, presentation, we'll definitely take advantage of them. And of course, uh, community powers GitHub Actions. As I mentioned, uh, we have actions from various partners. We have actions that we create, and of course, actions from the community. All right, so enough with the kind of overview. Let's get started and take a quick look at a basic CI scenario. So I have this application that I wrote, and what it does is it shows uh, sort of the most popular repos by language on GitHub, and it just gives me a nice uh, presentation and layout of those. But what I want to do is today I want to actually uh, deploy this out to a cloud. So if I go over to the Actions tab, um, I can go through, and the first thing you'll notice is this action happens. This application happens to be written in JavaScript. So we've recognized that by looking at the language that GitHub knows is primary to that particular repo. And we've offered you a couple of different options for what you can do. So you could do a very, very basic node workflow. So if we click on that, we'll see that out of the box, this is gonna set you up to test, to run your tests across a couple of different versions of node using a matrix um, and across and for push and pull request. Uh, but what I really want to do is, this is a web app, so I want to deploy it out. And we can see a couple of different options here. Uh, so today, I happen to be most familiar with Azure, so I'm going to use uh, this template provided by them uh, to deploy a Node.js website to an Azure web app. So when I click on this, I get presented with a template to do a couple of different things. Uh, I get some instructions about what I need to do to set up uh, these things. So I'm going to go ahead and change this environment repo, and I've got um, uh, node, um, I think that was the name of it, popular repos, oh, yep. And so I create, have an Azure web app created uh, from a package path, it's just gonna, my whole repo is good. Um, and then I'm gonna use node 12. And if I look down here, I've got a couple of basic things happening. I'm gonna set up a, uh, check out the repo. It's gonna set up a version of node to use. Uh, I'm going to run kind of a basic set of dependencies um, and then publish. So let's go ahead and commit this guy. And in this case, I'm going to be a little bit naughty and dangerous and just commit directly to the uh, master branch. If I go and click on the Actions tab. Oh, sorry. You know what? I think that I forgot to change uh, one thing in this particular template. Uh, up here at the top, we can see this template runs on release created. I actually want to run this guy on push. And we look here in the editor, uh, right away I get some help to tell me what's going on. So I want to run on push. Uh, in fact, I want to only want on, run on pushes to the master branch. Um, and while the editor helps me with that syntax, if I forget, we've got documentation right here to help you along. So let's commit that back. And maybe this time we should, yep. So we see, we, we recognize there's a new workflow file committed uh, and we're gonna start running it. So in this case, we're gonna run this particular workflow on runners that are hosted by GitHub. Uh, and we have runners available that are on all of the major operating systems. So Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, as well as the ability to host your own runners, which I think is another great feature of Actions. In fact, recently we shipped the ability to host runners not only for an individual repo, but also for the entire organization. All right, so while that goes, uh, we'll go ahead and we see it's built my action, uh, built my app. I can go through here, I can look at the logs uh, and see what happens. And now it's uh, deploying up to Azure. I actually did this uh, earlier, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, this application running. All right, so we see here's my application running. I deployed it earlier. Um, it looks pretty nice, but um, there's a couple of things about that process that 
just aren't great for me. So first off, I think that uh, we're missing a pretty important language here. So I see no Ruby uh, projects mentioned. So I think we need to fix that. And secondly, you know, I don't like the fact that we just, you know, pointed right at uh, production. You know, we just said, you know, we're just going to push and push to production. I think that could be fine, uh, even for a simple application like this. But using some of the power of GitHub Actions and some of the community, I think we can do uh, a lot better. So what I've done is I have another version of my application that I've done a few different things to. Uh, first off, I've got a Docker file. So I decided that instead of just kind of using whatever node runtime I get, I want to control those things. So I've Dockerized this application. And in addition, I've added a bunch of different workflows. Um, and you can see I've got one that does a build. I've got this thing called chat ops here, cleanup PR, et cetera. So we're going to walk through this more uh, richer continuous delivery syrup, uh, scenario that I've built. So as I mentioned, my application is missing uh, that core important language, Ruby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and make a quick change. Now, I could open this up in a code space. That would have been a really cool thing to do. I think I'll try that later. But for now, since it's just a simple job, simple change to JavaScript, I'm going to edit right in the browser. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put Ruby as the first language after all. I think that looks good. All right, so we go down here. We're going to commit changes. And in this case, I can't commit directly to the master branch because I've got branch protection set up. So I'm going to say, go ahead and add Ruby and say, add Ruby. And we'll put a nice comment, say, Mona was sad. Okay. So go ahead and propose this file change. Immediately, we'll get dropped into the PR experience you guys are all probably very familiar with. Go ahead and create this pull request. And then right away, a couple of things happen. So as before, we just kind of pushed and it kicked off immediately. Now we're in a pull request and we have a couple of required checks coming up and we can see them starting to run. And click here, go uh, start to look at the details of running and we'll see we're doing a bunch more interesting things here. In fact, um, we've added a whole bunch of features to our build uh, as compared to what was in the default template. Let's go take a look at that. So this is the deploy PR workflow that goes off. And see, I've called this deploy to Azure for review. So what's happening here is first thing I'm doing is I've got pull requests targeting the master branch. So this is going to run anytime somebody raises a pull request that targets the master branch. Um, I have a job that's going to build my application. And in order to help improve the speed of my build, I'm using this action that we ship called cache. And what it does is it lets me take some files that I don't think are going to change very often. In fact, like these node modules probably are not going to change uh, beyond whenever my lock file changes and store those out into fast storage so I can restore them quickly versus trying to always down them from NPM. But I can also use a conditional, which is another very powerful feature of action to say, well, if I don't find the exact version I want, I can go ahead and run that NPM install if I want to. Of course, we're going to build. And then we hit our first action from a partner. In this case, uh, Docker has created a great set of actions for uh, building and pushing Docker containers. Um, as you can see, this is a really nice action. It made it super easy for me just to supply some credentials, uh, and it kind of takes care of the rest. Includes nice features like being able to say which, which Docker image I want to try to use as a cache for building this Docker image to make it faster. All right, so let's go back and see how we're doing here. All right, so it looks like if I look at my deploy to review here, add Ruby has finished, that's great. So if I go back and look at the pull request, I should now have an environment. So the first thing that's happened is that workflow automatically created a, a new environment, so a new version of my app for me. And if I go click, right click on that, we can see, yep, we have our nice new version. It's got its own URL, so it's taking advantage of a nice feature of this particular cloud service that I'm using. Uh, we got Ruby, sweet. I can see Rails being that number one star of Ruby, Ruby uh, repository on GitHub. Fantastic. So I've gone through and I said, you know, I think this looks good. It's reviewed, but you know what? I'm not uh, admin, right? So I'm just a developer. I can write code. Uh, 
perhaps, but I can't necessarily deploy it up to production. So what I want to do is I could have somebody else come in and I want to go ahead and deploy this guy to staging and comment on that. And right away, I'm so this is kind of interesting. So I've added this uh, command here. I said, okay, deploy to staging. Uh, what does that do? So I've got, you can see a couple reactions. We can see GitHub Actions has seen this and it's dispatched it. So let's go take a look and see what's happening here. So we go back and we look at our workflows again. We can see I've got this chat ops workflow. And here I'm taking advantage of a community action. So this guy, I have no idea who he is, but Peter Evans wrote this really, really cool, uh, what you call slash command dispatch action. And in this case, what it's gonna let me do is I've got two different commands that it supports. Uh, deploy and swap. Uh, the permission is set to only admins of the repo. And this actually does work because in the case of um, issue comment event, in this case, it only runs out of the default master branch or, or the default branch for the repo. And so you can put protections on that to make sure somebody doesn't go and change this here if you want to. It's only gonna run for pull request issue types, and then it's going to give some reactions. And what this does is this rate raises a repo dispatch event. And the repo dispatch event is something that we have that lets you kind of create your own custom events in GitHub Actions and really expand on what they can do. So in this case, we see I've got this deploy to staging workflow. And what it does is it takes this rep repository dispatch uh, for the deploy command and then does a bunch of really cool stuff with it. Uh, so it's going to take and look at uh, it's going to log me into Azure because I happen to be using Azure, so I get this secret. And then the first thing it does is use yet another community action that sets up these deployment events. So you saw the fact that I had that nice environment and deployment for my pull request that included a link out to everything. Uh, this, this is the action that takes care of it, does it for me. And with this dispatch event, you can see I've got this custom client payload. So here I'm able to use the fact that GitHub Actions contains a lot of detailed information about what triggered them. Uh, in the case of the repository dispatch event, it can have a custom payload in that great action written by Peter Evans, actually attach the pull request information. So I'm able to, even though this workflow is running out of the default branch, go ahead and grab the pull request shell from it so I know I'm deploying the right thing. Um, and then it's gonna go ahead and deploy my, deploy my app to staging. So if we go back and look at our pull request, we can see, yep, done a bunch of things. So, hey, it's successfully deployed PR 13 to staging, uh, which is really cool. If I click here, I want to see, well, what happened? It takes me right to the run uh, that did it. I can see the comment happening. I can see the deployment to Azure. Um, and if we go back, I can certainly click on this or go here and look at the environment and see, yep, staging's been deployed. Let's go up and see that I've got a new URL here uh, complete with that uh, Ruby language. So that's fantastic. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is, you know what? I want to make sure this guy goes to production. So I'm going to run one more command that uh, takes and does a VIP swap uh, into production. So it's going to take my staging slot and it's simply going to swap it over to production, make sure it's warmed up, make sure it's ready to go, um, and do some additional uh, checks for me. And then when it's all done, I'll get one more entry here into this environment uh, so I can see what's going on. So while we're waiting for, it takes a couple of seconds to do this. Um, let's go ahead and check on the progress here. So we've got my nice deploy to production. I can see it's running swap command there. Uh, let's go check on our job. All right, so this is at a swap with production. It can take a minute or so. Um, in this particular case, I actually do have this running on, on one of those self-hosted runners uh, that I mentioned. Um, we can go take a look at the workflow. As we can see, it looks awfully similar uh, to the one that we did uh, for, for staging, but we can also see that we're not rebuilding anything. Uh, so we're taking advantage of some good practices. We built that container once, we tagged it with a particular SHA. And so we know that um, every time we deploy it, you know, whether to any environment, we're not rebuilding, we're not getting a new dependency. Uh, we're deploying exactly what we're testing, exactly what we're validating um, in every single case. All right, so we got one more, Let's see if we're done here. All right, so now it's pending. Uh, being deployed on this particular 
um, environment. Let's go see if uh, it's still working on swapping in production. So we'll move on uh, and take a look at that one more uh, workflow that we have. So when this is all done, I'm going to check this deployed production. I'm going to merge this pull request. But I want to make sure that I don't uh, leave any cloud resources out uh, out there to be spending money. So I have one more workflow that I'm running on pull request closed. Again, back to that power of being able to run different workflows for different scenarios for different events. Every time a pull request is closed that is targeting master, I'm going to go and I'm going to delete the review app that I had created for that. So now I can make sure that um, my application, I get that great review cycle. I get that e each instance of my pull request is uh, built. I can push them through to different environments using chat ops, all driven through actions, um, and even make sure I clean up and you know keep that cloud spin down uh, with actions. So I was sort of going beyond the ICD. So I want to thank everybody uh, for coming today and, and really think about in this sec section, what we covered is you know, sort of the overall power of actions, what we can do with it, how you can use it for CI and CD, uh, how you can use GitHub Actions to automate things to Azure. You can do the same thing to Amazon AWS, to Google GKE, uh, you know, using, there's some actions out there for Terraform uh, and other clouds. And, and finally, how community is really part of our vision and, and how we want to take actions forward. And, you know, that demo that I did, all of those cool things I did would have taken me a very long time uh, without definitely all of the community contributing uh, to make that easy. So thank you very much again and uh, talk to you in discussions. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much, Chris, for that amazing presentation on GitHub Actions, the ability to turn infrastructure into code. Not only that, what I find the most fascinating about Actions is the community adding to Actions, whether it's an individual developer or it's a partner putting the Actions in the marketplace and coming to marketplace and seeing it grow day by day. It is taking us one step closer to what I've always dreamed about, which is solving problems in a declarative manner, which is which is some of the things we already do right now is if I want to do a DevOps step and I don't exactly know what I want to do, more than likely somebody has written an action in Marketplace and all I have to do is search for it. So remember, after every single session, we can you can ask questions in discussions and we can ask those questions live right now. So moving right along, I have a few questions for you, Chris, from the people. Somebody asked, will action support some kind of user interaction like input step in Jenkins? Some, so some action.yaml could ask for human input to approve or decline to continue a workflow or abort it with canceled or fail. What is the general mm -hmm. roadmap of GitHub action? So that's a lot of, that's a very <laughs> long sentence. I'm just gonna read it over again so that we are all on the same page, so. Gross WS, GitHub user Gross WS, or Gross WS says, will Action support some kind of user interaction like input step in Jenkins? For example, some action.yaml could ask a human in for input to approve or decline to continue a workflow or abort it with a canceled or fail. Uh, yes, it is absolutely something that is on our roadmap to do. Um, we have a lot of great things kind of coming in that particular area. You know, that idea of having sort of uh, manual approvals uh, for deployments, mm -hmm. more than just the chat ops thing I showed, uh, the ability to trigger manual workflows manually to, to request specific input. Um, you know, a great example of that is I've got a deployment workflow that I want to trigger, but when I when somebody triggers it, I want to request a particular version of a Docker container that they want to deploy or something like that. So those are absolutely things that uh, we do intend to provide. Great. Chato, do you want to chime in? Do you have any of your own questions? I know yeah, you've been itching to use GitHub Actions. I have, you know, so right before this, I tried to like start playing with it for like 20 minutes, but then I thought, no, it'd be a bad idea to get in the zone right before I need to go be social. So um, what are some of the coolest actions you've seen so far? 
Um, well, I showed a couple of them. Like the the dispatch one is really really neat. I had a lot of fun playing with that. Uh, so whoever created that, uh, Mr. Peter Evans on GitHub, uh, that was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Um, you know, one of our our maintainers, Mail, who who works on the Yarn project, early on with actions, and this has been a few months ago, but he created a really really cool action that, whenever somebody posted an issue about Yarn, he would. Um, he would check the, if there was a code block in that issue. He would take that code and he would run it against the latest version of the Yarn code. And the idea being that perhaps the user filed a bug on an old version and it might have already been fixed because that happens all the time. I mean, developers find bugs and they fix them that they don't necessarily file or it doesn't go through a big process. And so I thought it was really, really, really cool. Very, very neat use of actions. Nice. Cool. So I'm going to step in and ask more questions while we have Chris right here live. GitHub user atul asokan Tulasi has a question. When will actions and packages be available in enterprise on-prem? Will there be some curated version of the marketplace along with it when it is released on-prem? Uh, so as Nat mentioned this morning, uh, GitHub Actions and GitHub Packages are both coming to GitHub Enterprise Server. Uh, we plan to ship that later on this year. Um, I can't divulge the exact, exact date, but it is absolutely happening this year. We are working incredibly hard on that. Um, we have a couple of different plans for how we're going to let people use the community. So um, mm -hmm. in the, quote, in the box or with Enterprise Server, we will ship the actions that we GitHub have produced uh, that we deem safe and, and have been, you know, we check the security and we know who builds them and all that kind of stuff. Um, we will also have a way for you to, to configure your enterprise server to reach out to the marketplace um, and be able to potentially use anything in the entire marketplace. And then finally, obviously, for those security conscious organizations, we actually have the, a need for this on GitHub.com as well as GitHub Enterprise Server. We will provide a way for administrators to go in and limit the set of actions. Maybe there's particular orgs or so they're saying, hey, we're absolutely happy to use actions from AWS or from Azure or from HashiCorp or Docker, but we don't want to use the random ones in the marketplace just because we don't know the providence or if there's two-factor auth configured or those kinds of things. So there's some more questions. Um, this user says, can I use GitHub Actions for some actions like Welcome a new member of my team and keep using Circle CI for push and merge. You know, if you want to just use actions for some of those sort of what we call SDLC events, you're absolutely welcome to. Uh, in fact, we do have some actions that we ship that are sort of breeding or first time contributor ones. There's a whole bunch of other ones in the marketplace. Uh, so if that's where you'd like to start, I think that's great. I'll take the next one, Moju. Um, so <laughs> we have one from uh, Tinny Tinnum Laker. I'm sorry if I butchered that. That's the hash, that's the handle. But um, he said, great demo. Uh, where do you see actions have the biggest advantages compared to other CI slash CS? Maybe that was supposed to be CD products like Jenkins or GitLab pipelines. Um, I really think that the, the coolest feature of actions and the thing that makes a difference is the fact that we are trying to focus beyond just CI, CD. We absolutely want to have a very, very flexible, a very powerful enterprise class CI, CD system. But there are so many more things that developers automate. And as we add mm -hmm. more things into GitHub and into the GitHub family, uh, take, it, take a look at the NPM acquisition. Like as, you know, and we have that, plus we have Dependabot. Um, over time, we can do really great scenarios like, hey, every time Dependabot recognizes there's a, a dependent new dependency of your uh, new version of a dependency of your repo, could we fire an event and let you run all your unit tests against that new dependency automatically to kind of get yourself a, a litmus test of did they break you and maybe you can just automatically take it um, you know, beyond just the security fix. But I, I think there's a lot of really cool things that in that sort of broader ecosystem and, and broader set of events uh, that we can do. So I think that will have to be our last question for right now. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you guys in the chat.